We mentioned that in the evolution of a dystrophic lake, that the next stage is our ultimate evolution of the lake is development into a bog. And today we're filming at a classic habitat. We're standing in the middle of a huge quaking bog on North Lake in the Catskills in New York State. The, the North Lake that surrounds the bog that we're filming in is a dystrophic lake. It has been left undisturbed by man, showing its dystrophic characteristics, the stained water, and this bog that we're standing on, and it is a quaking bog, that is, there's water around my feet. If you move on this bog, it quivers or quakes as you take steps. These are encroaching more and more into the lake, and eventually, if this dystrophic lake is left undisturbed for hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of years, the whole area will develop into bog habitat. This bog is created originally by sphagnum moss, a shallow water area in the lake where sphagnum starts to take hold. It proliferates, and it's one of the types of vegetation that basically creates its own habitat. That is to say, through ion exchange, it creates an acidity that makes it intolerable for most other plants to live in. And so the sphagnum develops and the sphagnum builds on top of previous generations of sphagnum, layer after layer, until eventually the base of this bog is formed. Now this acidity also cuts off the oxygen. That is, oxygen through this matted partially decomposed material blocks the oxygen so that you have a very acid anaerobic habitat. Now eventually as this sphagnum builds, other types of plants can move in, but they have to be specifically suited for this habitat. For example, along with the sphagnum and some types of bogs, you'll get a few ferns that may develop. One of the characteristic ferns is the Virginia chain fern. Heath plants will also start to develop. Heath shrubs such as leatherleaf or bog rosemary will start to develop, all relatively short uh, in terms of their vertical height and growth. You may also get bog cranberries developing as well. You've heard of cranberry bogs. Well, that's where they exist. That's where they do well. They love the acidity. You may also get an unusual group of types of herbs that are carnivorous. These are herbs, carnivorous herbs, that actually feed on insects. They devour the insects, digest them, and those nutrients are then passed into the bog ecosystem. Two types, the pitcher plant and the sundew. And of course you can get trees developing ultimately, but normally for the bog to develop trees, it has to be in an advanced stage, and these trees are always relatively few in number and are diminutive in size. Trees that are very dominant here are trees such as black spruce, certain types of pine, and occasionally balsam. Now this habitat, as we described it, is anaerobic, and it's very acid. When you're walking on it, you can actually smell the sulfur associated with the sulfuric acid. That's the kind of acid that's formed by the sphagnum. What they do is they remove calcium from calcium sulfate or gypsum for their own nutrition and they substitute the hydrogen ion forming sulfuric acid. Oddly enough, all of the nutrients that are in this bog don't come from the water below. That's basically sealed off but come from the rain from the atmosphere. 